very blessed morning to you wherever you are. My name is Reverend Daniel Gichana. It's a privilege to share with us in the devotions this week. We have been looking at the continuing ministry of our ascended Lord. There are things that Jesus began to do while he walked here on earth and even after his ascension, he continues with the same. And today I want us to look at this simple thing that Jesus said he will do and he continues to do even today. We are looking at Jesus is building his church. Not only is Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, he is also building his church. I want you to take a look at Revelation chapter number 1, verse 12 to verse 13. Revelation chapter 1, verse number 12 to 13. The Bible says, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, and guarded about the chest with a gold band. I want you to notice something here. The Apostle John that is writing begins to make a description, and he says that he saw one who was in the midst of seven lamp stands. Of course, the obvious question is, what does this mean? When you take some time to study Revelation chapter 1, you will find an explanation in verse number 20. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 20. The Bible says, The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. So we can be able now to expand on what we read in verse 12 and 13 with clear understanding coming from verse number 20 to help us understand that Jesus was standing in between seven different churches. And of course, you can have this as an entire study by itself, looking at the seven churches in the book of Revelation and there are various interpretations of it, but this is the good thing. For us to be able to locate Jesus Christ in the midst of these seven different churches, why is he standing there? He is standing there because Jesus is building his church. He is building his church. And in his hands, the Bible says, he is holding the angels of the seven churches. Who are the angels? The Greek word there is angelos, which means the sent ones. So these seven stars are the leadership of the seven churches. And Jesus is holding his servants in his hand and is standing in the midst of the churches because he is building his church. I want you to understand the following. Number one, while he was on earth, Jesus said he will build his church. The book of Matthew, chapter number 16, verse 15 to verse number 19. Jesus himself said it while he was still here on earth that he is building his church. In Matthew 16, verse 15 to 19, the word of God records this for us. But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. See, when he said, I will build, you do a study on that and you discover the Greek word is oikodomio. Oikodomio. It means to be a house builder, to construct, to confirm. The word oikodomio, it means a house builder. It means one that is constructing. It means one that is confirming. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that Jesus Christ in heaven right now, he is building his church. 
John saw it in a revelation. John explained it with what we have read in Revelation chapter 1. We also understand Jesus himself said, I will build my church. Because God gave Jesus to be the head of the church, that is his body. Jesus is the head of the church and that is his body. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 to 23, the book of Ephesians chapter 1, I'm looking at verse 22 to verse number 23. The Bible says, and he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. God gave Jesus to be the head of the church. And because he's the head of the church, from the head, the entire body receives instruction. The entire body receives instruction. And Jesus being the head of the church, he's in heaven, but he's also building his body. He is building his church. In the book of Colossians, chapter one and verse number 15 to verse number 18, we find the same truth that is being spoken about. Colossians 1, 15 to verse number 18. The Bible says he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Jesus is building his church because he's the head of his body. He's the head of his body. He's the captain of our salvation. He is the author and finisher of our faith. And he has not left us. No, he continues to build his church. Understand this, just like the head is connected to every part of the human body through veins, Jesus is connected to every believer through his grace and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'll say that again, just like the way your physical head is connected to every part of your human body through a network of veins. Jesus also is connected to every believer through his grace and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in Titus chapter number 2 and verse number 11. The book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. The word says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. I want you to notice the grace of God has appeared to all men, the grace that brings salvation. The book of Ephesians chapter four, Ephesians chapter number four, and I'm looking at verse number four to verse number seven. The word of God says in Ephesians four, verse four to seven, there is one body and one spirit, just as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So notice this, there is a connection. We are told that each one of us, grace has been given according to the measure of Christ. So by the ministry of the Holy Spirit and also by the grace that brings salvation, every believer is connected to the head who is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is building his church and he is connected to each and every believer. Now notice how the body operates in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 to verse 16. Ephesians 4, 15 to 16, the Bible says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, that is Christ, from whom the whole body joined 
and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So Christ is building his body and each and every believer who is a member of this body, the Bible says they are joined, they are knit together by what every joint supplies. So I say to you today, you are very important in the body of Christ because as Christ is building his body, there is what you are bringing as your contribution into the body of Christ. There is what you're bringing you as a joint. There is a supply that you bring. And the Bible says this is possible according to the effective working by which every part does its share. And this causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I want you to note that just like the head directs the hands and the feet to respond to the needs of the body, Jesus directs members of his body to respond to the needs within his body through ministries and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Still looking at Ephesians chapter 4, I want you to look at verse 11 to verse number 16. The Bible says, And he himself gives some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stage of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Notice this, sometimes when maybe your knee is itching you, you want to stretch your hand to ease that itching. It's the same way that Jesus is able to respond to the needs of the body by directing members of his body to respond to needs that are within the body through the ministry and gifts of the Holy Spirit. There are ministers that God has raised, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Christ is interested in us growing, maturing, so that we no longer remain as children, tossed to and fro by every need, by every wind of doctrine. So wherever there is a need in the body, the ministry of the Holy Spirit will cause a believer to respond. The ministry of the Holy Spirit will send a minister of the gospel to reach to that place because Jesus, even who is in heaven right now, he is building his church. He is building his body. John says, I saw him as one standing between the seven lampstands. He was standing because he's building his church. He moves up and down, ensuring that the body is edified, ensuring that the body is growing, ensuring that the body is healthy. And today, I want us to invite the Lord Jesus Christ to build us up, to help us, to mature us by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, through the various gifts that he has released into his body, apostles, evangelists, prophets, pastors, and teachers, because he is building his church. And his church is not a physical building. No, his church is you and I who have received him as Lord and Savior. And he dwells in us by his spirit. We become his temple. We are the church. And Jesus is building us up. So wherever you are lacking today, wherever you have need today, Jesus is building the church and is able to send 
ministers. He's able to send the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's able to ensure every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. It causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I want us to pray that the Lord will build us up, that in every area where we are lacking, He will send the ministry of His Spirit. He will send His servants because He's building His body, that is the church. Let us pray together. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you that while you are still here on earth, you said, I will build my church. Thank you, Lord, that you are constructing us. You are building us. You are the master builder. Not only are you the head of the church, but you're also the builder of the church. Lord Jesus, we invite you today to build our lives. There are various areas where we are lacking, various areas where we are wanting, and we invite you to build us up. We invite you to build us up. We invite you to build us up. Lord, by what every joint supplies, I pray today that which my brother or my sister needs to be supplied. Lord, let the supply come to them. Let the help come to them. From within the body, Lord, let the ministry of the Holy Spirit, let various individuals supply. Let your servants bring forth that which we need, the equipment to be built up because we are your body. And we trust you today to build us up. We trust you to supply in every area where we are lacking. We trust you to supply that which you need for our growth and even, Lord, for our edification. We thank you for your diverse servants that you have raised for the sake of equipping the church. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us, our hearts would be open to receive that equipment that you're releasing to us through your servants, through the men and women you have raised in this house, even through the ministry of our Father. Lord, we pray that you shall enable us to be built up in order for us to be able to do the work of the ministry, for us to be edified as your body, for us to come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, for us to become a mature man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Lord, we refuse to remain as children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We refuse to be caught up by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. We refuse that in our lives. We choose to be your body that you are building by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, by the ministry of the servants that you have raised, by the ministry that which every body, every joint supplies within the body. We trust you that you're building us up and you're causing us to grow and to become the mature man that you have called us to be, even here on earth. Lord, bless our day today. Go ahead of us, do us good, and let your name be glorified. For we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. May the Lord richly bless you. Remember, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, and Jesus is also building his church and the church is you and me. Jesus is building us up. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we continue to look at the continuing ministry of our ascended Lord. May God richly bless you.